good evening to all of you it has been a while since i have uploaded a video on the complete hemodialysis series because of some busy schedule could not upload videos last few weeks have been uploading the shorts which were uh, common spotters that the residents usually encounter in their md or dm exams so today continuing with the previous av complete hemodialysis series in the av fistula vascular access Today we will have a discussion on AV fistula examination. So as we discussed before, AV fistula is the lifeline for the CKD patient. Chronic vascular access is the atrovenous fistula. As it is the long term vascular access for the CKD patient to have a stable, reasonable, healthy life, the patient need AV fistula. to get a regular dialysis so that is why the important it is important to have a proper examination of the fistula at least by the dialysis technician every time and a nephrologist at least once in a month to pick up the problems of the fistula at a earlier stage so that the treatment can be planned accordingly so most of the patient in the clinics if you have seen if they are on dialysis for more than 5 years 10 years or 20 years definitely the vascular access must be av fistula because without that the life span of the patient on dialysis is somewhat uh, not good as similar to the fistula patients in this the most important pillar is the examination it is the duty of the dialysis technologist or the nurse to have to know what are the things to see whenever the patient comes for the av fistula uh, dialysis with av fistula so the patient might be having radiocephalic fistula brachiocephalic fistula or the brachiocephalic basio brachio basilic fistula and the most commonly radiocephalic and the brachiocephalic fistula is the one you will be encountering so in the anatomy and the physiology we have discussed in the previous uh, videos the radial artery or the cephalic vein will be connect sorry radial artery or the uh, brachial artery will be connected to the cephalic vein few terminologies been used here the artery which is supplies the blood to the fistula is called as the inflow part or the inflow segment of this is the av fistula site the anastomosis site this area is also called as the anastomosis site and this one is called as the outflow tract many a books divides this outflow tract into few sub, sub segments like juxta anastomosis area cannulation segment from here to the heart outflow tract but the terminology basically includes two things inflow segment and the outflow tract or the outflow segment inflow segment by the artery outflow tract by the veins i hope you are clear uh, in these terminologies because there will be a multiple tabular column we will be encountering uh, while discussing the examination so this terminology is somewhat important so normally here the radiocephalic fistula the suture site usually healthy as we discussed before it takes 6 weeks for the fistula to mature once the fistula matures there will be remodeling in the vein the wall thickness increases the flow increases the cannulation segment usually occurs over here so ideally it won't be fully distended fully collapsed you will able to see the fistula clearly and suture site is usually healthy now the question comes why we have to examine because the problems will be detected at the earlier stage so that the treatment can be planned accordingly earlier the treatment better the outcome and as a nephrologist we should able to detect whether there is a inflow problem or the outflow problem because from the examination only you should be in a position to detect where is the problem the patient is encountering or it is a localized problem in the form of aneurysm localized uh, 
uh, many a times the patient might develop a hematoma formation, needle site injury, localized thrombosis. These are the things which are common. Similar to the any clinical uh, system examination, what are the things you will encounter? You have to do inspection, palpation, percussion, and the auscultation in the particular system examination for example cardiovascular system respiratory system or abdominal you will go with these protocols just a minute i could not erase all these so similar to that av fistula examination also we are having same protocol to catch the diagnosis first is the inspection Second is the palpation. Third, you will be auscultate for some findings in the fistula. And in the fistula, you are having two special tests. What are those? One is the pulse augmentation test. Another one is the arm elevation test. These two tests help to localize the problem. Where the problem might be, it helps in the diagnosis of where the problem is so in the fistula you are having two extra tests which is pulse augmentation and the arm elevation test it is always better to mention this as a special test rather than including this in the palpation even though it is one of the uh, thing that we palpate and find but most of the examiners want you to mention it as a special test how it is done it is being done by palpation so in the palpation you will be doing the Pulse augmentation test and the arm elevation test. So today we will see regarding the inspection. Why inspection? Inspection is the most important step. Easy to do. And you can pick the important auto track lesions at the earlier stage. Even a localized aneurysm thrombosis can be better detected by inspection at the earlier stage. So that is why the nursing dialysis nursing staff or the dialysis technique. every visit not at a particular fortnight or weekly every visit just look for the any abnormality any warning sign how to do just look at the site look for any kind of localized swelling or not so today we will see regarding the inspection finding what are the things to see and a few classical clinical examples with images i will show you how the time delay have occurred because those are on the lesion which if picked at earlier the patient might have underwent treatment at the earlier stage uh, outcome might be somewhat better there are few fistulas you might not believe that have reached that stage how it have reached that stage like that so that alone we will see first in the inspection So the entire upper limb and the chest have to be examined. Just not always if you see any kind of warning signs. Let us take this patient A who is having radiocephalic fistula. What are the things you have to see? Look at the suture site, whether it is healthy, any kind of swelling, because aneurysm is common at the suture site. It might start as a small bulge later on it increases in size many a times it might burst also fistula burst is very very life threatening situation because the artery is burst open it have to be intervened at the earliest and patient have to be sensitized regarding this so look for the fistula site look for any aneurysm localized hematoma look at the needling site whether there is any color change redness abscess formation or hematoma any kind of pain you can ask from the history and look for any collateral veins prominence of the collateral veins indicates there is the auto track problem and still arm very easy to examine every time you can do it if you find any warning signs you can look at the shoulder and the chest also so in the examination so this discussion can be from two point of view so if you take from the examination point of view compulsorily you have to do the chest examination if you take from the clinical aspect point of view chest examination if it is a female patient or if it is a male patient they might be wearing a shirt or t-shirt very difficult to do all the times might not require 
at least you have to do till the shoulder at the mid arm so first you have to look at the site for any aneurysm or localized problems in the form of redness, hematoma, skin uh, discharges, chest wall have to be looked for collaterals, localized redness and the collaterals have to be looked in the arm and forearm also and any changes in the fingertips. I hope you might have heard about the steel syndrome which is also one of the complications of wavy fistula. So look for any changes in the fingertips. There might be a presence of gangrenous changes, pain. The patient might be complaining. So here one point I missed is look for the fingertips to look for any color changes. So these are all the important things you have to do. And what are the important findings you will catch in inspection is the outflow tract stenosis and the earlier aneurysm. So that's all in the inspection in the few example images so ideally the said told the suture site have to be healthy there should not be any uh, aneurysm redness localized swelling hematoma should not be there the vein should not be more prominent with experience you will come to know how much prominent the vein can be and the there are two type of uh, needling technique one is buttonhole and the rope ladder so you have to look at the needling site also because many times buttonhole technique the patient might be having localized abscess so over a long period of time so that have to be assessed which kind of technique the patient the getting the dialysis with because the examiner might ask you if it is an exam case if it's a case stage 5 and the patient is having this law the examiner will definitely ask you what kind of dialysis cannulation technique the patient underwent based on the suture site uh, thing you can easily find out let's go to the example this is the image example number one so this patient have been referred from a localized dialysis center so this was the finding look at the finding over here how swell and how red it is exactly at the suture site it is this is another example again suture site infection aneurysm so this might have picked up at the earlier stage if the patient have been examined properly the patient was getting dialysis for almost one month with this swelling gradually increasing up finally the patient was found to have abscess in this removed re one more fistula was made and he was doing fine this is the another example where there is a swelling you can look exactly at the suture site this sutures are there this patient was not on dialysis this was also about to burst open infected suture site aneurysm drained fistula was closed this is the example number two what is the finding you can see over here Look at this hand, look at this hand. The entire hand is swollen up. You are not able to see any collateral, right? Many times collateral might not be there, the entire limb might be swollen up. He was found to have central venous stenosis, which was later intervened and this swelling came down. So this is how the difference might be. Why these two marks, someone might be having doubt. He initially was having radiocephalic fistula, it went for a secondary failure, then this fistula was made. This is example number two, where you can find from the inspection. Look at this fistula, how prominent it is. This is example number three. He was also referred after a long period, approximately after one year, this swelling was gradually increasing because of any cases. Yes, right, it is central venous stenosis. I hope you might have guessed it correct if you are seeing the video till now because most of the people might have skipped by now. And if you are seeing the video till now, I hope you might be a nephrology resident preparing for the exam. I hope you are able to find this kind of uh, swollen fistula as central vein stenosis. Look how puckered the skin suture site are. This patient was getting dialysis from this fistula. Do you believe? He was getting. He came with central venous stenosis and it was intervened. So that is why it is important to 
deducting those station at the earlier stage. This is example 4. Look at the vein over here. There are no much collateral you will see. Look at the veins over here. The entire neck veins are dilated. Multiple collaterals. Why it occurs? Because the fistula might be supplying blood at, at a rate of, for an example, 600 ml per minute or more. So these are all the normal, not a normal drainage volume. So because of the high volume added with output tract problem, how the blood is going to reach the heart, it will find wherever the way is. So it will go to some part of the vein in the neck. The flow will be from the limb to the head and neck area. It takes the another route, join through the collaterals, through the chest wall, it goes to the heart through some vein. So that is why I told chest wall examination is important. The examiner might ask why it's because of the central venous stenosis. So another example. Look at the vein, how prominent these are. There's one localized swelling. So whenever these kind of things are occurring, this indicates partial central venous thrombosis might be there or the partial output tract stenosis. Not all prominent veins are uh, central venous stenosis. Probably output tract might be blocked or the fistula flow might be high. But out of these, the most important is the CVT or the outflow tract. Outflow tract in the sense I'm mentioning just before entering the uh, chest wall. So again, a few students might be having doubt what is the central veins. Central veins are those veins which are in the rib cage below the first rib above the diaphragm. So this is one of the definition which has been, I have used this definition in my thesis which has been accepted. Then the exam also I told this answer. And this central vein, if you look for the definition, you might not find in any textbook. Even few textbook mentioned these iliac veins and the IVC as central veins. But at least for the fistula point of view, if you say central veins probably located those those veins which are located in the rib cage inside the rib cage and does outflow tract include central vein also yes it includes central vein also at least for the shake of discussion i have mentioned before the central vein also the block might be somewhere here also not complete block partial block might be there so the veins might get prominent the another example Example number five, look at the veins over here, how prominent it was. Even her half of the face was swollen up. So again, what was it? The patient was having superior vena cava partial thrombosis. Only very small area was left over for the blood to flow. She also underwent some form of intervention to open the central veins. Look at the fistula over here, how swollen up it is. So what are these example indicates if it have been seen at a somewhat earlier stage the intervention might have planned at a earlier stage the patient might or not have reached these kind of hypertrophied or blocked output tract blocked fistulas these were all the clinically difficult cases to manage because in this patient you can find that time period for the intervention but how you will give the dialysis then becomes the query you have to select the some other vascular access so that is why Inspection is important from clinical point of view and for exam point of view, your examiner is going to ask questions on this. That is why it is important. So I think 10 minutes or more is over. If I discuss palpation in this video, you might get bored. So in next video, we will discuss regarding palpation. Bye-bye.